Hi, I'm Gloria, a wife, mother of two, and grandmother of three beautiful kids. I'm on my 70th years and been a cancer survivor for 37 years. It was in October of 1983 when I first felt the lump on my right breast. I thought it was just a simple cyst, but when I palpated it, I had goose pimples when I felt it was not movable. I had that gut feeling that this, this is something different, so I sought the help of our family doctor, who after palpating my breast, advised me to go to Manila for further evaluation and possible treatment. I am from the Visayan island of Panay, and traveling to Manila is quite expensive, with only my husband earning a living for our family of four. We went to the Philippine General Hospital with the help of a cousin who happened to be a nurse there to be evaluated. I went through a needle biopsy and anxiously waited for the result, which took almost a week to be released. The result was negative for cancer, but my inner self felt otherwise. Our cousin said, we'll seek a second opinion and brought us to the clinic of Dr. Reynaldo Hoson, who's thoroughly examined my breasts. After the evaluation, he told us that I needed to undergo surgery as soon as possible. He helped us process my admission to the PGH the following day. I felt like I was in a haze, but reality set in when I had to leave my three-year-old son to the care of my in-laws. I had modified radical mastectomy of my right breast and lumpectomy on my left. I was so devastated, especially when the biopsy report came out. I had stage two breast cancer and that I need to undergo chemotherapy immediately. There were so many questions plaguing my mind, like what are we going to do? Where do we get the money for my treatment and transportation expenses when the company where my husband worked closed its regional office just days before my surgery? I cried my heart out and pleaded with God to help us. I even bargained with him for the sake of my two boys. God indeed is an answering God and merciful to his children. He sent me people to help us like Dr. Hoson, who assured me that I need not worry about his professional fees, as I can just pay him whenever we have the money, though his concern is my chemotherapy that needed to be started immediately. I have a very supportive family, my parents, brother, even relatives, who help us financially upon knowing my predicament. I was made strong by the support of my family. My psychiatrist cousin, who time and again will call me from the US to boost my morale, but most of all, the confidence that according to her and Dr. Hawson's words, that I am a strong person. The chemo is agonizing for me. I have fine, sometimes invisible veins that tend to collapse. The process is painful. Dr. Hawson sometimes need to prick me three or four times before finally finding the right vein and successfully administer the medicines. There are times I would ask him to stop because I already felt faint. I had bowels of nausea and vomiting during the course of my chemotherapy. Added to that is my hair fall out, putting me into depression. But the good thing about it is that I did not lose all of it. I know it's just temporary because Dr. Hawson told me that it will grow back. I was thankful to God for sending Dr. Hawson in my life, grateful for all his morale boosting advices. I was on my fourth chemo when Dr. Hawson told me he has to go on a study leave for a few months. He endorsed me to another oncologist, Dr. Abaya. Was it three months? I cannot exactly remember, but I had a vivid memory of Dr. Hawson sending me a letter on what's new on cancer treatment. He was at the Sloan Kettering Cancer Institute in New York City. Isn't he great? <clears throat> My journey is hard, full of insecurities, uncertainties, depressions, and anxieties. Along the way, there were times I wanted to give up 
but without my family's support and prayers and motivations and my strong faith in God, I would not be happy and victorious now. I've been cancer-free for 37 years. Although this past 10 to 15 years, I developed root edema of my right arm, being right-handed and worked with my right hand, thus incurring accidents like burns, scars, cuts, and pricks, causing me to have very high fevers in a matter of two hours. Before I had to be hospitalized due to these fevers, with my arms swollen and burning sensations like second degree burn. As my fever goes down, my skin will start to itch, followed by skin peeling. I take all of this in stride. As my family and Dr. Russell said, I'm a strong person and a fighter. Before having cancer, it's like being handed a death sentence. But I know all of these are just trials and my God will give me this if I cannot bear it. I don't take having cancer as punishment. Rather, it's God's way of strengthening me and my faith. Since then, now, I have enjoyed with my family, friends, and my religious community and service club that we belong to. As God's providence, I even had a chance to travel to other places and visit relatives and meet new friends. I consider myself lucky. No, blessed because I met a dedicated, compassionate, and most of all, godly man in the person of Dr. Ray Halson. He never ceased to inspire me with his patience and dedication to his profession. There is life after cancer if we accept it. And remember, in our life's journey, we are never alone. God is always with us. Now, I'm on my 37th year as cancer survivor and will turn 70 this coming December 1st. To God be all praise and glory.